in the world of sailboats small enough for a couple to handle, but big enough to use as a floating cottage for the weekend, but still fast enough to have fun with, there's usually something for any budget that you have. Small enough, big enough, and fast enough are fairly easy things to find, but when we add the word affordable, that list of boats available shrinks dramatically. But Ryder from Practical Sailor and Good Old Boat, Bert Vermeer, may have found us something special. Michael and Gail were not particularly looking to purchase a Hunter Legend 35.5 in early 2020, but they were searching through sailing magazines and websites to find an affordable sailboat with a roomy interior and good sailing characteristics. They'd already co-owned different boats and chartered together, so the goal was to expand their sailing horizons on the waters of British Columbia. They retired just before COVID and were visiting Vancouver Island when they learned of the sale of a 1993 Hunter 35.5 Legend out in Sydney, BC. Inspection and negotiations were successful, and in mid-March of 2020, Michael and Gail set off on a four-month coastal cruise along British Columbia's coast in the nearly pristine boat Atalanta. The history of Hunter Marine is fairly well known. Henry Lurs established it in the early 1900s when he began building small fishing boats. Then the company started constructing custom-built pleasure craft in 1948. Eventually, Hunter Marine expanded into production boats in the early 1950s with a focus on mass production to reduce cost. Lurs found success where others had actually floundered. Over the years, the family purchased and sold various divisions of the company and stayed abreast of current design features in the boat production industry. From dinghies to 50 plus foot yachts, innovative designs moved from the drawing board and out the factory door. Model lines were established and updated as the years went by. The Legend series focused on roomy interior in a strong, lightweight hull. It was meant to go fast and numerous variants up to 45 feet emerged from the factory. The smallest of that series, the Hunter 34, enjoyed a successful four-year production run and was replaced with the development of the Hunter Legend 35 in 1986. Modifications to the deck and layout of the interior accommodations updated the design to the Legend 35.5 in 1989. Production ran for six years and ended in 1995. Construction of the Legend 35.5 follows Hunter's established method of solid laminate fiberglass hulls with an internal fiberglass grid system. The deck is balsa cord with plywood reinforcing where deck fittings are attached. The deck to hull joint is an outward turning flange with an aluminum tow rail bolted through the flange. Hunter was an originator of the fiberglass structural grid system, electing to keep the hulls light and dependent on the robust grid to add strength and stiffening. The concept appears to have worked. There's few indications that the grid system ever failed under normal use. However, the grid system does make it difficult to access all parts of the hull internally. This could prove to be a problem should the hull ever be damaged in a grounding or a collision. Considering that this is a production boat with a focus on keeping costs low, we found that the fiberglass detailing to be very acceptable, particularly when exploring hidden portions of the lockers and cabinets. The interior woodwork is nicely detailed and appropriate for a production boat. The balance of wood and white gel coat makes for a pretty welcoming interior. An overall length of 35 foot 7 with a maximum beam of 11 foot 9 placed well aft of midship makes for a pretty roomy hull. The Legend 35.5 design saw the deep fin keel option available on the 34 discontinued. All 35.5s were launched with the shallow 4 foot 6 winged bulb keel. Displacement is around 13,000 pounds. Although the design focus was on a cruising boat, the Legend 35.5 with its 569 square feet of standard sail area has the potential to be a really quick boat. At Atlanta, the 1993 Hunter 35.5 Legend of this review is equipped with a 7 8 isomat double spreader mast with wire rigging of the traditional style with a backstay, not the B&R rig, often associated with Hunter yachts. The chain plates are well inboard with single deck entry points secured to the hull's grid system. The split backstay allows for easy tensioning of the forestay. The Harkin furling drum is mounted below deck in a deep anchor locker, a welcome solution 
to the drum interfering with anchoring equipment at the bow. With the stays in a single plane and no factory provisions for a baby stay, there may be a tendency for the mast to pump in choppy seas. A solid vang supports the boom. From the factory, the Legend 35.5 was equipped with a Dutchman furling system with a traditional sail cover for the main, which is fully battened. The T-shaped cockpit on the 35.5 Legend is surprisingly deep for a boat with an aft cabin. The seats are wide enough for lounging and yet allow for bracing on the opposite seat edge. I found the cockpit combing a little lower than I would consider comfortable as a back support. The two angled edge works well when heeled going to windward, but there is a lack of support when the boat is flat. The cabin bulkhead also featured a two angled surface. The sailing instruments are located on the upper surface. Effective for viewing, but not really comfortable when being used as a backrest. With the stays and Genoa tracks set against the cabin trunk, the side decks are wide and unobstructed. The factory original teak cabin top handrails have been replaced on this boat with stainless steel units for low maintenance. The slotted tow rail allows for versatile tie-off points for spring lines or fenders. Double lifelines extend from the push pit to the pulpit with gates adjacent to the cockpit. The foredeck is unobstructed right up to the Samson Lawrence windlass mounted just after the anchor locker lid. With the gently sloping cabin top leading to the foredeck, there's plenty of room for sail control or to have a dinghy stored up here if you want to. The Legend 35.5 came with Hunter's Cruise Pack inventory of cruising equipment. This included a fully battened mainsail with the Dutchman flaking system and a traditional mainsail cover. Previous owners have dispensed with the Dutchman in favor of a lazy jack and stack pack system for the mainsail. Michael says he enjoys the ease of dropping and flaking the big main with this system better. A single slab reef point on the fully battened north sails main is controlled with a line leading back to the cockpit. When asked at what point a reef goes into the main, Michael replied that it was usually when gale force winds were issued. But practically, sailing to windward with winds approaching 18 knots across the deck, Michael puts a reef in to keep the boat upright. Excessive heeling pushes the limits of control with a shallow draft rudder. A deeper keel and rudder would have been most welcome in most cruising grounds, but would have been hampered in excessively shallow waters. Going below on the Hunter 35.5 Legend is simply a pleasure. The very low bridge deck does not obstruct passage through the companionway, and it's only three steps down into a bright and voluminous cabin. Two large trapezoid skylights over the salon complement the translucent companionway slide, while seven cabin and three hull port lights complement the six foot three headroom. The oil teak interior is brilliantly illuminated with natural light. A small amidship deck hatch, large V-berth deck hatch, and four opening port lights provide plenty of ventilation throughout the cabin. The fixed port lights are frameless set into recesses in the cabin top. Due to minor leaking and plexiglass crazing, these port lights were replaced recently. The fixed port light over the galley includes a small opening port light perfect for venting moisture from the galley range. The overhead is nicely finished in gel coat with appropriate covers for accessing deck hardware fasteners. Probably not the most stylish of headliners, but definitely very practical. When you enter the main cabin, the galley's to port with a deep double sink near the center line in a J-shaped configuration. A substantial, well-insulated top-loading refrigerator is located next to the stove. Two opening lids provide great access to both the refrigerator and separate freezer compartments. An added bonus is the entire countertop does not need to be cleaned to gain access to the fridge or freezer, just slide items over to the closed side. As is usually the case, there is a dearth of counter space for food preparation. Although there are drop-in cutting boards for the sink, a flip-up board would probably be most convenient to extend the counter space. Storage for the galley items is somewhat limited. The fixed galley port lights provide welcome light, but does take away from additional storage space. There is storage available in small lockers above and below the countertop, an open area for plates and bowls, and a stack of drawers adjacent to the deep double sink. This functioning galley setup will keep the chef in touch with the cabin guests. On the starboard side of the companionway is the head compartment, quite a roomy space. It includes the head, a vanity with excellent storage capacity, and a sit-down shower. A plexiglass splash guard minimizes spray to the vanity, but no provision for a shower curtain was visible. Although finished with easy-to-clean melamine surfaces with teak trim, taking a shower here is going to mean some cleanup time afterward. It wouldn't take much effort to install a shower curtain to reduce the workload. 
Two large fixed ports on a deck hatch provide plenty of light and acceptable ventilation. Moving forward, there's a small navigation table to starboard, just large enough to hold folded charts on the popular cruising atlases. The end of the SETI provides seating. The table has fairly deep storage underneath and a comprehensive electrical panel above. The panel is set in its own cabinet installed on the bulkhead. Access to wiring is easily accessible by simply removing the face of the panel. There is very limited space for electronics at the navigation station and placement of such would require considerable thought. Best to have navigation electronics in the cockpit anyway. The saloon table is contoured to the settees and surrounds the mass support. A drop leaf on the starboard side allows easy access to the forward cabin. The table height is adjustable and in the lowest position forms a double berth. The starboard settee is relatively narrow and wouldn't really be considered a sea berth. With the Hunter's shallow hull, there's very limited storage under or behind the settees. However, nicely finished teak cabinetry at the shoulder height provides adequate storage on both sides of the interior. The V berth is separated from the main cabin by a double door arrangement. With both doors open, interior space seems to expand exponentially. Two substantial hanging lockers shoulder this cabin, providing plenty of space for clothing. The V berth is wide at the shoulders, although a bit short in length. A couple would need to be friendly with their feet. The 64 gallon water tank is located at the aft end of the V berth. Although there is storage space forward of this tank, the only access is by lifting the mattress, which is fairly inaccessible. The aft cabin is through a solid door after the galley with plenty of access room. The bed is a thwart ship and substantial in size, certainly a roomy double. There is enough room in the stand up area for dressing and there are three fixed port lights against the hull, an opening port into the cockpit and a small opening deck hatch providing plenty of light and ventilation. A hanging locker provides storage for clothing. The cabin sole is teak and holly plywood panels fastened to the fiberglass grid. All panels can be removed for refinishing, replacement or gaining access to the hull. Unfortunately, with this style of floor panel fastening, care has to be taken to ensure the panels are really secure. Finding that last squeak in the floor can be maddening. The aft two panels can be lifted to access the shallow storage bins under the sole, which is handy for beverages and canned goods. The three-cylinder 27-horse Yanmar diesel is tucked under the cockpit floor with acceptable access through the removable companionway steps and two side panels, one in the aft cabin and the other in the head. The first step in the companionway, a wide platform with a lid into a shallow storage compartment is removable and allows excellent access to the top of the diesel. Access to the oil dipstick, raw water strainer, and water pump are all acceptable. Engine instruments are on a panel in the cockpit, throttle and gear shift on the pedestal. Engine stop is a mechanical pole located just beside the companionway, which is somewhat inconvenient for the skipper behind the wheel. I would change this out for an electric solenoid stop with a switch on the instrument panel. If you're looking for a bulletproof ocean going sailboat to follow your dreams to a tropical paradise, this is not the boat for you. But if you're looking for a comfortable roomy coastal cruiser with the ability to take on ocean waters occasionally, the Hunter Legend 35.5 would certainly be worth considering. Time has proven that Hunter's grid system of design and construction techniques have successfully endured what sailors and nature have thrown their way. Like every other boat of this era, the Legend 35.5 has the potential for trouble spots, including water penetration into the core deck. But routine inspection and maintenance can identify and correct those issues pretty quickly. For her designed purpose and price range, it wouldn't be hard to find a better qualified coastal cruiser. What's your favorite boat that you'd like to see us review here on Practical Sailor? Leave it in the comments below and do me a favor, hit the subscribe button and click that little bell to get notified when we release a new video. We do that every Monday and every Saturday. I'll see you guys next time.